As a resident of the Wildland Urban Interface myself, I have always been an advocate of defensible space. Those emissions from a catastrophic wildland fire are huge. We wanted to reduce the hazardous fuels, so we wanted to reduce ladder fuels, surface fuels, and open up the crown. No matter how much we thin out of this forest, somewhere between 5 and 7 percent grows back every single year. So much of Placer County is either forested or under agricultural uh, use that creates large amounts of biomass for which we really don't have a good method of disposal. They asked me to put together a program to start taking a look at how we could, number one, uh, prevent forest fires of magnitude, uh, number two, reduce the air pollution, and number three, take a look at how we could use this material in a different way. We know the forests in California really do need to be thinned, and we know that we have the resource for our power plant in Lincoln and our other plants with Sierra Pacific, for that matter, to take that and use that as a fuel source. So we're hoping that the data from this project will help us to expand, not just here, but maybe throughout the state of California. And hopefully what we can do is all come together, provide the ability to remove this from the woods in an economic fashion, and really get that piece of the industry back on track. That is significant because it reduces the threat of catastrophic wildfire, at the same time improving air quality in Placer County. This is the landing location. We have one about every 20 acres where they yard in the big whole trees. This is where they sever the limbs from the trees, the boles of the trees, and they put the logs on the truck, take the logs down the road to the sawmill, and then we're left with a big pile of slash. The material is being chipped by a private contractor, put into the chip vans, and then being hauled down to the Lincoln Mill to, use, to be used as cogeneration. So rather than burning it, we're utilizing the material. Many companies, SPI being uh, one of the largest ones in this area, utilize this material to create uh, what's known as cogen, or combined heat and power. So effectively, you can turn the, the forest chipping material into electricity and into heat. These chips and products coming in from the woods, we put them in a big kind of a building type where we can keep them dry. And we take those chips and we push them into a conveyor belt. We heat water with the fire from the chips burning, so it goes to the steam turbine generator. This plant here is capable of about 20 megawatts of electricity. We've been able to produce enough energy and electricity for 500 homes in a year, and that is significant. More than 50 tons of particulate matter emissions were avoided just from this one project. That's the equivalent of emissions from 3,500 fireplaces or wood stoves over one year. So the project here is essentially using uh, this product as a resource to uh, provide uh, energy relief, in this case electricity, but also eventually uh, this product can be converted into uh, fuels. The technology to convert the same wood chips into fuel, alcohol-based fuel for our vehicles, is almost here. Once that hits, the, all of a sudden the economics will turn around for that. So we've, we've got essentially a true renewable resource here. The plant where this is going burns about 14 tons of this material per hour. That's important because in the controlled environment, uh, the emissions are much less in terms of both nitrous oxides, uh, particulate matter, and, uh, and other toxic components. This project is assisting the Placer County Air Pollution Control District in development of a local carbon market credit framework to generate additional resources for further reducing greenhouse gas emissions. I think there's watershed quality, there's habitat benefits, uh, there's also uh, recreational uh, benefits too by preserving the forest rather than having it burn or reducing the risk of burning. For each one megawatt of power that we create at a biomass facility, we can potentially create five new jobs for that community. So for a three megawatt plant, that's 15 new jobs for people within a community that might be fairly economically depressed. We, we, these are the, the canyon and ridgetop communities in the east end of Placer County. It's essentially a guidebook for other rural count forested counties, not only in California, but around the country and around the world. We'll put together how do you go through all these processes, how do you work with the EPA, how do you work with uh, the environmental community, and then how do you put together packages that businesses will be attracted to to come into your community and essentially help clean up your community. Logging, milling, mining, extractive industries, this is a way to utilize 
ongoing streams of woody biomass that will grow back year after year and be able to feed and fund these communities on these biomass plants. It's, it's truly a win-win for these communities. I, I guess I would just say from a personal and professional standpoint that this is the way we need to be managing our forests. We're reducing the fuel. We're, we have a good product that's being utilized. We're reducing our quality issues, the whole carbon sequestration thing. It's, it's just a benefit to everybody.